This is a definitive guide for installing a BL Touch on an Ender 3. No wires cut and full SD card support. I'm currently doing a series comparing auto bed leveling systems for the Ender 3. Previously, I covered the Easy ABL from TH3D Studios and I found that it worked really, really well. This video, we're doing the BL Touch. It's been highly requested and I planned it a long time ago, but unfortunately, I've had a bit of a hold up from the Australian mail system, but finally it's here. The BL Touch is a mechanical auto bed leveling probe. Imagine a micro switch mounted on a servo and the servo swings it out to probe the bed and then swings it back when it's finished. That's exactly what a BL Touch emulates, but fortunately it's much, much more accurate than that. Let's get started on this install or resources in the guide. And the first thing we're gonna do is look at the mount that you need. Just like with the Easy ABL, once again, I'm using the Pexfang version two duct. And the first thing I did after printing it was to test fit that everything lined up and make sure the bottom surface was flat. Now the BL Touch comes with a really short cable, but I would recommend going for the one meter extension cable. Here I have a 1.5 meter one, ends up being just a little bit too long. Next we have disassembly of the old mount, which is exactly the same as the Easy ABL. We're gonna start by removing the two small M2 bolts that hold on the fan, and then we can carefully rest that down to the side. After that, there are four bolts on the side of the pets bank, and they will remove the big fan shroud over the top. We can also slide that one off, Next comes the fan on the front. There's only three bolts for that. Once they're undone, you can carefully lay the fan to the side. And then finally, we have our single retaining bolt on the left-hand side that holds on the mount. If you're doing this from stock, simply undo the nuts and bolts as you see them until your extruder looks like you're seeing here. I've got the BL Touch still mounted here temporarily. I will have to take it off later on. The first step is to get the right hand side hooked in and then hold everything in place with a very firm left hand screw. The version you're seeing here is a little bit outdated so it might be different to what you use at home. It's a good idea to run it to one side just to make sure nothing is gonna collide before proceeding. And if all of that is good, we can continue by putting on the fan with the three screws or four on the newer models. Then after that, we can put on the main duct over the outside, making sure that you align it vertically before you put in the four retaining screws. At this point, I decided to remount the BL Touch and I ran into my first problem. When everything was mounted in and I held up a ruler underneath, I found that it was far too short. Even with the Pro fully extended, it was still not as low down as the nozzle, which means it had no chance of ever touching the bed and working as a probe. I turned to Thingiverse and I saw that there was a version that was incorrect in that the BL Touch didn't sit low enough and guess what, that's the one I had. I solved this problem by shimming it with washers and it also gave me the chance to even things up. So I had six on the left hand side, four on the right, and that got it pretty square and that got the distance exactly how I needed. You're aiming for about eight mils between the nozzle and the main body of the BL Touch where the probe sticks out from. A quick retest by bringing it down to the bottom and then using my hand to manually wind the Z screw up and down sees that the probe just touches a couple of meters before the nozzle and therefore everything is lined up nicely. Final steps are to insert the fan on top with the two M2 bolts that hold it in place and then our assembly is completely done. Time to do some wiring and there's only five wires across two plugs. If we want to avoid cutting any wires, there's a little bit of fiddling to do, but fortunately it's easy enough to follow along. We're gonna start like with the Easy ABL by running the wiring from the hot end down to the control box. And I decided to put a large piece of heat shrink to protect the delicate wires. And then I simply cable tied loosely along the length of the existing loom. This is a temporary install. The best way to do this would to be feeding them down inside the fiberglass sleeve. Now, as I enter into the control box, I chose to use another piece of heat shrink to protect it. And then I cable tied it, not too tight. You don't want to cut in and damage the wiring. Once again, this is a temporary way to do it. In the control box, we're going to undo the LCD plug. Then we're going to carefully cut away the hot glue holding on the Z end stop plug and remove it carefully with some pliers. Now we have a slight problem here. The loom that comes with the BL Touch is for three pins, even though there's only two wires going in and our existing one is only two. But fortunately, if you get a pick or something pointy, you can press down on the pins and remove them and then do the same for the BL Touch one. And then the two plugs will be loose and it's simply a matter of plugging them back in in the correct way. So if you have the little lugs facing up towards you, the white one needs to go on the left and the black one needs to go on the right. This is essential for getting it to work correctly. If you get it backwards, it won't work as it's intended. 
make sure everything is secured nicely and then very carefully plug it back into the main board in the exact same spot. We don't have to cut any wires if we do it this way, although you could make up your own little plug. So that's two wires down and that means there's three to go. But now we run it into a choice. We require one of the pins from the ribbon cable that is usually used for the LCD beeper. You can save a little bit of money if you're willing to cut and splice into the pink wire on the loom. And I have a link in the description to someone else's guide on how to do this with pinouts for everything you need. I chose to spend a couple of extra dollars on a pin 27 adapter board. That way no wires are cut and everything is completely reversible. This is what held up this video, although I can confirm that it was Australia Post, not the seller, that was the problem. The pin 27 board goes into the connector where the LCD ribbon cable was going. There's only one way it can face. And now we have our remaining three wires and they should plug in here, but we have a slight problem. The positive and the ground are reversed on the plug that comes with the BL touch. Fortunately, if you use another little probe, you can get up the little plastic retaining pins and then you can slide out the two pins, switch them around, and then it becomes completely plug and play. Just make sure you push back the little locking tab so it can't come loose later on. From left to right, as you're looking in, we have positive, ground, and then signal. Everything is labeled on the board, and after that, we plug back in the ribbon cable. That's the physical install done, so it's time to turn our attention to the firmware. Other guides I've seen around have to disable the SD card to get this working. This guide does not. Once again, we're going to base our work on the TH3D Unified Firmware. So once again, we've downloaded the latest release of the firmware. This one is U1R110, and I've named the folder VLTouch because I also have my Easy ABL one from the last video. Like normal, we're going to double click Open Firmware Windows to get started. So like with the Easy ABL, most of the configuration changes are going to take place in configuration.h. And once we're going, we're going to scroll down until we get to the end of three section. We're going to start by defining end of three to tell it that's what we have. And then we're going to come down to define custom probe. And then we're going to add a completely new line. So because the BL touch acts like a servo and end switch in its operation, we need to tell it which pin that that servo is attached to. And this is referenced elsewhere in the firmware and it just tells it that the servo for the BL touch is residing on pin 27. Okay, down to the advanced settings. Once again, I prefer 3x3 three three grid instead of 4x4. Four four. You can up this quite a bit if you want more accuracy, but of course it's going to take more time. For the same reason, I also prefer to have fast probe on. This of course is another trade-off of accuracy versus speed. I find it plenty accurate enough on fast probe. I'd highly recommend turning on baby step offset. It's going to help with our Z offset later on. And because we have a BL touch, we can also leave the heaters on while we're probing. I'm going to scroll down lower and we have a custom probe. If you use a ruler or calipers, you can measure exactly how far left, right, front or back of the nozzle. And we use this diagram here. So mine was actually minus 53 to the left of the nozzle. We can see because it's to the left, it's a negative direction. And it was a little bit in front, so negative again, and that was five millimeters. Whichever mount you choose, I highly recommend measuring it yourself and putting in the exact values here. That's it for this file. Now we need to do a couple more tweaks in configuration backend.h. So for everything I do on this one, it's probably easiest to go Control or Command F and then type in what I'm talking about. And that'll take you instantly to that part of the file. We're going to start by doing just that and searching for Ender 3. And that will take us down to the settings for our printer. Now the BL Touch is a little bit different to the Easy ABL, so there's a couple of lines we need to change here. We need to change the end stop inverting, and there's two instances of this, so we're going to change it from true to false for Zmin end stop inverting. And then just a little bit further down, also going to change Zmin probe end stop inverting from true to false. Our change is almost done. We're going to do our search command again, and this time search for fix underscore and go to find. That's going to take us down to the appropriate section and Marlin allows for about five different types of probe. It's a fixed mounted probe for the Easy ABL, which is what Tim from TH3D has set up. For a BL touch, we need to change this to BL touch. So the simplest way to do this is to type in the rest of the command and then put in replace with making sure that this line is in capitals and say replace all. Now if we search for our top one, we shouldn't be able to find it. But if we copy and paste this into the find field and search for that, there should be about four instances of it. We need to make sure that under tools that we've set it to Sanguino. 
1284p. Now we can hit the tick to see if everything's going to work. Okay, we've run into an error that we expected and that's that it doesn't quite fit on the chip. But you know what? There's an easy solution to this. There's no need to disable SD card support. We can see that we're really, really close. The end is at 64 bytes and we need to get it down to under 48. So let's come back to configuration H. We're going to do Control or Command F to search and we're going to type in disable underscore boot. That'll bring us to this line here. So we're going to do disable boot and we're going to get rid of the comments to define disable boot. That'll save us that tiny little bit of space we need and it should be able to compile and upload successfully. There we are, beautiful 98% of the program storage space. That matches what we did for the Easy ABL. And all we had to give up was our Ender 3 boot screen. Beautiful. Hopefully you were able to follow along step by step. And the exciting news is we can now turn on the printer and test and see if everything is working. You'll immediately notice the self-test startup clicks of the BL Touch, and then you can go to the menu and see that the SD card options are still there and there's new BL Touch options in place as well. Let's modify the start G-code in our slicer. So I'm gonna modify my start G-code in my slicer and it's pretty simple to do. In this instance, I'm using Simplify 3D, but it's gonna be the same in any slicer. I'm gonna to come to scripts and then in our start G-code, after I have home all axes, all I need to do is add a G29. Everything else after that should be exactly the same. If you have a line of code which primes the extruder from the front left, just keep in mind that the BL Touch or the Easy ABL will finish in the rear corner of the printer. So just tell it to come back to somewhere like 10, 10, 0 before it does its intro line to prime the extruder. That's it, save, and we're ready to do our test print. To be efficient, we're going to combine our first print with setting the Z offset. Choose something big like I did with my X, something that has a lot of slow perimeters to give us time to dial it in just right. At the start of the print, we'll see the probing. It's a little bit slower than the Easy ABL, and I have a video on how to speed this up called Advanced BL Touch. It shows you exactly what to change in the firmware to get it as fast as possible. Once the print starts, we're going to come to the Tune menu and then scroll down until we get to Z Offset. You see it says Baby Step Z Offset as we set it, and we're going to dial it in until we can see that the layer is being squished just the right amount. After that, we can press in on the wheel. This will temporarily save it, but to store it permanently to the EEPROM, we need to come to store settings under control. Here we can see my test print of the large X on the stock bed. And apart from those flaky bits on the brim, it came out pretty nice. They're flaky because I was still adjusting the Z offset there. I next decided to put on a sheet of glass, just like I did with the Easy ABL. And the VL Touch automatically adjusted for the different thickness. And I got a really nice first layer without changing anything at all. You can see that it's quite uniform and I'm very pleased with the results. Once again, we can use Octoprint and the Bed Visualization plugin to probe repeatedly. Here I'm switching back and forth between back-to-back -back probing and you can see it gives near identical results. Just like the Easy Able, the accuracy is great. That's it, our BL Touch is installed and we didn't need to cut any wires or lose SD card support. Hopefully you've been following along with my Ender 3 series and if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe this one has earned your subscription. My next video is going to be a short video comparing the two auto bed leveling systems back-to-back so you can make an informed choice if you're going to go this way. And then after that, I'm going to finally address the bed, which has delaminated twice by testing back to back some glass and an easy peelsy system. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And until then, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.